Oh man, this is doozy. The legal debates around Let's Plays. Fair use. Oh, fair use. Why must you be such a fickle beast? But I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's do a quick rundown of some of the big things that have happened with Let's Plays and the legal debate in the last little while. For a little period of time, Let's Plays were existing in an area of copyright where the copyright owners and the Let's Players were live and let living. It was a prosperous time. And then the great YouTube shutdowns of 2010 rolled around. And this actually, all it did was illustrate a flaw in the flagging system of YouTube videos at the time. Various uh, well-known and prolific Let's Players, right before they were given partnerships by YouTube, had their videos flagged and taken down due to uh, copyright infringement and their accounts were suspended. It was just interesting because people were putting claims to the Let's Players voices. It, it, it wasn't a good time. It, it was bad time for YouTube and a lot of people wonder if the reason uh, Chaka Conroy and Nintendo Capri Sun at the time got their partnerships was due to like an apology for this because before then it was impossible to get partnerships for uh, Let's Play content and suddenly after that it started becoming possible and then you have people like Toby Turner really start to make money off it etc etc. So there's that and then there was a uh, Achievement Hunter who uh, is, who are, who are a spin-off group from Rooster Teeth, the company that made the first well-known and prophetic Machinima Red vs. Blue, which is entirely their topic altogether we're not even going to get into. Well, jump cuts because I lost my train of thought. Anyway, uh, Achievement Hunter came out, they started doing reviews and achievement guides, and more importantly, started doing Let's Play content. Let's Play content, and they were making money off this. It, it was a great, great time. And then, copyright caught up. There have been more takedown notifications from legitimate co copyright holders over video game Let's Plays. Now, the question is, are these fair? Is this derivative? Is this something new? Is this a remix? Well, before we really get into that, um, let's quickly go into one of the biggest controversies because I know it'll come up and we will address it now and then we will explain. So in 2013, Nintendo decided to start taking the profits from monetization on Let's Play videos using their games. There was a lot of backlash to this. Were they right? Were they in the right? That's the question. That's the entire point of this series. The entire point of this is like, were they right? I don't think so. Do I think with their interpretation of the law they were right? Yes, but I think they interpreted the law wrong, which is really confusing when we get into the world of convergence culture. So, here's the bad boom. Fair use. What is fair use? What is copyright law? Let's define that. A copyright is a legal device that gives the creator of a literary, artistic, musical, or other creative work the sole right to publish and sell that work. Copyright owners have the same right to control the reproduction of their work, including the right to receive payment for that reproduction. An offer may grant or sell those rights to others, including publishers or recording companies. Violation of a copyright is called infringement. So there we go. Now we know what copyright is, and fair use is specifically a legal right for small, repro small um, reproductions of a work 
without any rights granted to the person that's naturally granted through law. So clearly, Let's Plays aren't actually fair use. However, the argument I'm bringing forth is that they are not uh, reproductions either. Welcome back. So now we know what it is and we know my interpretation on this. Is there anything else to touch on? Well, there is this. Let's look at the Total Biscuit Day 1 Gary's Incident. Incident. For those who are on the forum, basically this is what happened. Total Biscuit is a YouTube reviewer. He reviews video games. And various other media, I believe. He made an unfavorable review of this game. So, the developer, after having given that Total Biscuit permission to do this, decided to put a copyright claim on Total Biscuit's video. Now, obviously, this was pure censorship. What I'm arguing here is that we are not upholding copyright law when we bring out a Let's Play video or we siphon its profits. What I'm arguing is we are censoring art. Citing Sebastian Simigia in his or her paper, Fair Play, Copyright Issues and Fair Use in YouTube Let's Plays and Video Game live streams, we come to an interesting debate. Are they fair use? That, it all comes down to that. Is this fair use? According to the DCMA, the Digital Millennial Copyright Act, nailed it, uh, are they fair use? The answer? This precedent implies that there aren't, this precedent implies that there is. So, that leaves it up in the air. Well, that means we need to decide, as a society, do we consider this something new, something unique, something worthwhile? This was an act that is old and archaic, and the author of Fair Play copyright issues and fair use in YouTube Let's Plays and video game live streams, Sebastian Mead argues that it has become a hindrance to development, to moving forward. This is not a black and white issue. This is not something that can go yes or no about it. So, we knew said that we can't use the automated services that are currently in place to even come close to hoping to be able to know whether or not something is an inappropriate use of an IP. We need something better. But that something better isn't here. And as such, we have to accept that the laws in place don't work. Click on to see the other two subjects. Or go to the conclusion. Go to the conclusion. That's a possibility. Go there. That's cool. Oh, I'll see you there.